privatize everything. What the hell does he want to do here? Uh, Drew Carey, Price is Right host. I'm, I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm uh, Nick Gillespie and I'm the uh, editor-in-chief of Reason TV and Reason.com. Drew and Reason.tv uh, put a little series out and uh, we all watched it. Some people reported on it and uh, I wrote a letter saying if you'd like to come and have a little dialogue with your Cleveland City Council, uh, we'd like to offer that to you. And you said yes, we had a nice little breakfast, and we're here today. You did the Reason um, program, Reason Foundation video, and what I'm saying is we looked at this and you, you, you whacked this pretty good. It wasn't meant to be a love letter, it was meant to be a hey, something's wrong, yeah. Right. And uh, it was like an, and it was meant, honestly, it, it was actually meant to not to solve a problem, but to start a discussion just like we're having right now. And uh, so I appreciate, though, the fact that you invited us to come here and speak to you and uh, talk to you because uh, that's what it's all about. People don't talk, nothing gets done. You know, there's a perception that um, things don't work in this city and I think a lot of that is just perception perpetuated by the media and by others and you know, Cleveland's been a big joke for a long time and I, I think we, we um, Cleveland love the has, city and work for the city. Um, they've been making jokes about Cleveland for a long time. Cleveland has not been a joke for a long time. Cleveland it has many good things going on, but it is in a long-term economic decline that has reached a crisis uh, situation. It, is, it had been as high as the seventh largest city in the country. It's now the 41st largest. It has less than half the number of people it had in 1950. It lost 10 percent of its population in the decade of the thousands. Uh, it has lost many of its, its jobs that are not coming back. I mean, this is something that needs to be addressed. This is a great city. We have cultural institutions second to none. We have a lakefront. We have the world, Cleveland Orchestra, best in, best the, world. in the world. We have a lot going for us that nobody else has. Have there been mad, bad decisions made in the city? You're doggone right. You're looking at one of them right over here. A stadium on the lakefront with no retractable roof on it. That the only thing in there is, is seagulls and snow in the wintertime, okay? You know, when I love the Cavs and I like Dan Gilbert, I met him, he's a nice guy, but you know, he can afford his own stadium. Thank you. Three quarters of the schools in the uh, Cleveland public uh, school system are an academic watch or emergency, which are the worst categories that the state has. How do you address that? I totally agree with you that competition in education is something that should be tried. I was an anti-voucher guy many, many years ago. I have changed on that issue. The solution we brought up in the video that I like better, and I thought the, that's the, it's the best school idea I've heard, uh, of all the school ideas is the backpack funding where uh, every school, public and private, charter school and public school, uh, has to compete for every student and the, the money stays with the student. I think the goal for Cleveland should be to be the number one business friendly city in the country. I was reading in the New York Times three days ago, the mayor of New York City, there are a billion dollars in a risk. Although they put aside $22 million fund for businesses to develop in his city and technology. They made the city wireless, open the city up for technology. I think that if we move in that direction also to give business supports, we can't do 22 million or whatever so that we can reach out to businesses just to let them know that our culture has changed and that we're open for business. Any business innovation. that's telling you I'm only going to I'm only going to set up shop here if you give me a tax break for the first 5 years and a couple, you know, and $100,000 in my pocket. They either can't make it on their own or they're going to bolt as soon as you stop paying them the mm -hmm. vigorous. So that's the wrong way to do yeah, it. You're I would tell those guys to see you later. Don't let the door hit them on the way out. It shouldn't be a struggle uh, and you shouldn't have to go through a lot of paperwork and headache uh, to start a business in Cleveland. And I think a lot of times when people think of Cleveland, they think, oh my God, why do I, why do I want to put up with that when I want to start a business here? There's a gentleman in the city of Cleveland who is a very successful business person who now works for one of the nonprofits. He owns a business in the city, right on 69th in, in Carnegie, and he wants to put in a $20,000 sign, okay, because he's trying to bring up his business. He applied for a variance to do it. This is what he says. He says, if we have to go, I'm just going to read it because it's pretty short. If we have to go to the Zoning Review Board, I understand that it may take 60 days for approval. That is simply too long. The summer will be over. The car wash will have lost more money. 
This is the kind of stuff that hurts Cleveland and puts people out of business. It's just ridiculous. Let me put some context to this. And sure. Then if you apply for a sign that's within our regulation, it would take nowhere between three to five days to get right. a sign that's within the regulations. If it's outside the regulations, it's a, it needs to be four foot by eight foot is the biggest sign, no more than two or three colors. Nice. That's kind of one scenario. If you want to go 10 by 10 and put up a little bit higher and have 10 colors on it, you have to get an approval to go outside there. Why does it matter how many colors are on it? I'm just, uh, that, that it's one of the regulations we have. That's what, get rid of it. Got it. The current setup that we have right now, if a bureaucracy is not working, they call upon us and we try to help guide them through the red tape. Mm -hmm. In the perfect world, the red tape's all gone and right. we're doing our legislative responsibility and trying to create the laws that help right. or Restructure, or restructure the laws that are hampering us. The city planning chairperson is next to me. She's mm -hmm. on the city planning right. commission. And we as the city are looking at a comprehensive overhaul, not elimination of our planning codes, but a comprehensive overhaul. It's yeah. been a year and a half. We've been building it through. We haven't recommended changes yet. I recommend going to a councilman who might be able to speed that up. <laughs> right here. <laughs> it's not about the store in the corner. It's not about zoning. It's about disinvestment in our city. I'm not politically correct, so I'm not going to, you know, it the crap is over as of this line of questioning, okay? Yeah, Go ahead. Just on the northeast side, Fisher Body, Tow Motor, Caterpillar, Sylvania, Cyril Copper, Viking Steel, and I can go on. Mm -hmm. They located, they moved out of the city of Cleveland and a lot of them offshore so they could, they could deal with people making five bucks an hour in China. Mm -hmm. I know you can't compete with uh, five dollar wages with uh, you know low income wages in, in uh, third world countries uh, and that's going to be a sad fact of life for us for a long time but we can compete on a lot of other things. Why not pick, uh, pick the most depressed area in Cleveland, however you want to define that and just say you know what we're going to suspend normal regulations for X, Y or Z period, see what happens. You want to help Cleveland? Bring the prices, bring the prices right on the show. And put on the road. Uh, the Cleveland. When I when I first, uh, I'll Bring take a quick Cleveland. story. When I first was offered the job as the host, the very 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 first meeting I had with CBS, they told me, "Hey, guess what? We're getting ready to travel the show." There we go. Uh, and I said, "Well, that's great because the first place we should take it is Cleveland." Five months later, uh, they had a meeting and they decided it was too expensive to move the show, shut down production. Embedded in the request to bring the prices right to Cleveland, and I don't mean to be overly uh, kind of argumentative. That is the problem. No, you know what? The Price is Right is not coming here. The Jersey Shore is not coming here. Uh, you know, uh, car manufacturing is not coming back here. What Cleveland has to do is say, okay, what can we bring to the world? Not what the world can bring to us. And I suspect that when uh, that mindset is gone, it will be uh, six months into a great long-lived recovery of, of Cleveland. I love the West Side Market, don't get me wrong. We, but it's only, open, it's only open four days a week. It's not open that many hours. My idea is, to sell it to somebody who knows how to manage a market. If I wanted to be mean about it, I would open a market right next door to the West Side Market and put you out of business. There are people who, who argue that we should privatize our parks, let the private sector run our parks. Because why are we in the business of cutting grass and watching trees and all that? We can take that argument to a point that all we do is arrest folks, take pick up trash, and make sure the roads don't have too many potholes. But I have a more believability in what government can do for change. It's just my philosophy, and we'll agree to disagree. I don't envy anybody here at the table. And with we have a lot of work to do. Uh, you know totally. It's a, you know, um, changing prices right from a place that gave away grandfather clocks, you know, uh, every day <laughs> to modern. You know, the, the first year I took over prices right was the first year they had the theme song in stereo. No way. <laughs> Anytime you want to uh, come and uh, visit Collinwood, I'll give you a grand tour, but the only one stipulation, you can't wear that jacket in Collinwood, okay? Okay. Oh, what's wrong with that? Uh, that's right, okay? I love this jacket. this jacket. Okay. You know, I've been in this city for a long time while you've been in public office. Uh, you've always been a snappy dresser, and we have the same exact cufflinks. How about that? <laughs> Good job. Great taste. That, I was just going to say, how about that? And I bet, I bet you would look great in this jacket. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Meeting adjourned. Thanks, everybody.